therapy army, let's be having you therapy army, let's be having you, let's be having you. Hey, the weather, I think the weather I mean, Manchester sometimes tells the truth about the feeling in the city. And today, the weather was lovely, it was sun was shining. So, yeah, after that huge win yesterday, mate, after that huge, huge win, symbolic win. Saeed, how you doing, man? Limbs everywhere. Saeed's ankle is more busted, more swollen. Oh, the... man. Um, the... Saeed, how you doing? I was just saying the weather today almost kind of like showed the, the mood, the feeling in Manchester. The red half of Manchester, anyway. The red Bro, half. 100%. 100%, man. What a day. What an ending. Good weather as well. It was nice and mild. It weren't too cold. You know what I'm saying? Too good atmosphere. Banging atmosphere. Have actually. you recovered? Because you know, what, you know what? Honestly, with fasting, I'm not and it, really. With the fasting and everything, it, it, still... took, it took a lot out of me, Saeed. Bro, and mentally and, and emotionally, the... I was drained. Oh. And then when I had to get a lift back here, yeah, because I got a lift back to the gaff here, yeah, the car was on the other side next to, you know, uh, Trafford, Trafford, uh, yeah, that side. Trafford, <laughs> yeah, Trafford, yeah, man. So I had, had to walk. To walk. Uh, yeah, you had yeah. to hop a lot. I had to hop along, man. So it was tough, man. It was absolutely tough, man. So it was difficult. But ultimately, but we got there in the end, man. We got there in the end. Worth it. Worth the trouble. Worth the the, the kind of, you know what I mean, the, the, the what situation. And yeah, man, all in all, man, a blessing, man. A blessing to be, you know, to be watching United, man. And that's what it is, bro. And it's just lovely to be watching United win, man. Like, all this season has been terrible, Lurid. One of the worst seasons I can't remember, man. Ever. Like, you know, I can remember. The football, the football. It's been depressing. The football has been one of the worst. One of the worst, bro. So, ultimately, yeah. I'm like, come on, man. What's going on here, man? Like, why can't we have good football? Why can't we, you know, be, be, be good at what we do, man? So, it's just good to see that finally... We have a bit of backbone, man. Really, really have a bit of backbone. And that's that's what I'm glad to see mostly. But just see the fans. You see the kid that was crying oh, um, scenes, on the scenes. thingy. Yeah, yeah bro. Camera, yeah, I mean, we had to, yeah, bro. Like, you had certain things happening and whatnot. But ultimately, you know, just, just happy, man. Wake up the next day. Don't have to worry about nothing. We just have to worry about, you know what? We won. Yeah, we won. And we're through to the next round. Big on Coventry. Simple. There you go. Uh, well, uh, Coventry in the Championship or League One? Championship, Championship. They're not. They're not. Um, I think they're like mid-table Championship. I'm not sure. You know. Remember they lost in the league, in the final last year, the playoff final. Was that they lost? Yeah, they were the final. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think. Let me find where they are. I think they're mid-table. You know. I, yeah, they're you know ninth what? in the league. Eighth in the league. Eighth. Eighth in the league. Big up Jarvis. Jarvis, let me know if you if you're free, you want to jump on. Happy for you to jump on, no problem. Yeah, man. Big up Jarvis, um, man. Jump on. Big up, big up Jarvis. Um, honestly, they, you know what? They're quite a historic football club, you know, Coventry. No I'm messing about. Quite yeah, Cop- football club. I'm, they actually won the cup. Guess yeah, Mark manager. Robbins. Oh my god. Mark the Robbins, man. Football, let them know about Mark Robbins, man. Give a little uh, bit of historical context. So give, give give a bit of context. Their manager is the guy that's credited. For saving Fergie's uh Fergie's job at Manchester United. I repeat, yeah. Mark Robbins, the manager of Coventry, is the guy credited with saving Fergie's um Fergie's job at Old Trafford. And there was banners in the away end at Nottingham Forest away, right? In 1989, 1990 yeah. season. Fergie out. There were banners saying Fergie out, you've had enough time. Because that was after three years and United didn't win anything. Yeah, you know of course, I mean? course, That was course. his fourth season. So he had to win something. He got the job in 86 and 1990. That was it. So he had to win a trophy after four years and spending. At that time, Fergie spent a lot of money, you know. Fergie spent a bit of money. Yeah. <laughs> buying yeah. lots of Dennis Irwin, bringing in Paul Imps, you know what I mean? Bringing in players, yeah. man, McAllister, bringing in these, uh, sorry, Pallister. Yeah, of Bringing course. in these, these, these players, you know what I mean? So, it weren't easy in these streets, man, for Fergie. You know what I mean? Some of the fans yeah. were booing him at OT. So it's just an absolute madness, yeah? How football is yeah. just poetic at times. Mark Robbins, the guy that's credited with getting the winner against... Saving Forest, his job. Saving, saving his job. Fergie's job. And can you imagine all that history? There's no 13 league titles. There is no yeah. league... There's no treble. 
<laughs> there's no double. There's no double, double, double. Like there isn't these. That there is isn't... the dominance. That is the yeah. dominance, isn't it? The, the, honestly, yeah. there's no dominance from the nineties to the nineties. There isn't. Yeah. So now he's the manager and he's facing Manchester United. Matt Robbins. Matt Robbins is a player plays for Man United, a striker. He was a decent striker, but he wasn't the most incredible striker. And no. he scored the goal that saved Fergie's. I mean, Martin Edwards was asked years later, and he was like, no, no, they, they could see what Fergie, but he said Fergie was under a lot of pressure. He said, if we would have lost that game, hey. if we would have lost the next game, maybe history, you know what I mean? The crowd were, were against him, you know what I mean? There was yeah. a in the fan base were against him. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. So he's now the guy we're playing against. So the build up to that semi final is gonna be mad. You're gonna see mad. all of you gen FIFA generation, those who are younger, you're gonna see his goal. It's one of the I think that's like a free kick or ball whip gets whipped in yeah. and he just pokes it in. You know what I mean? And United it was go only away 20 and celebrate. At the time, he was young as well. He was younger at yeah, the time. Yeah, baby face, yeah, baby face. He's he's carved out a, a, a coaching a managerial career for himself. I know that he was yeah. the manager for Huddersfield, you know what I mean? At Huddersfield, he was the manager for Huddersfield, so yeah, he did bits, but it is he, what he it did is. well. At, I think he did. He did well. At, um, he's done. Listen, he's got to the final last year, semi final now. You know what I mean? So, fair yeah, play yeah, to Mark yeah. Robbins, so, though. Yeah. And to you be fair, I mean? at times, yeah, they were going out of business. Remember, Coventry were going out of business at times. I think they got yeah. saved by somebody. They went in, they went, I'm sure That's they went true. into League One. They were in League One, they were almost were going out of business. With, um, the Sherry Stadium was in Birmingham, man. They were Sherry Stadium in Birmingham. That's what I'm saying to you. So, yeah. By the way, that's breaking news from the Premier League today. For us, have been yeah, I've seen that, seen points, that, man. I seen that, I seen Boy. that. Boy, yeah, I've man. The dates, badges, are here. the dates are here, man. The dates, yeah, the are, dates here, are here, bro. bro. We're gonna break it. Yo, make sure you haven't got the Zion Estates, man. Make sure you haven't got the Zion Estates. No, 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 no. I made sure. I made got sure. The right dates, mate. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We made sure. Yeah, be careful, people. Yeah. No Zion Estates, man. Big up everybody that's passing in it globally, worldwide, man. Wherever you are. But yeah. Saeed, look, let's get into the topics, man. The topics are, for me, what does this mean? The big, the biggest question is, can you use, right, first of all, can getting yourself up for a game against Liverpool in the Cup when you've had a horrendous season, um, yeah. everybody, the fans are on you, the pressure's on the manager, you know, in the Cup where we've actually knocked Liverpool out more times than anybody else has ever knocked them out. Um that doesn't mean the season, that's it. That's the season. Some United fans have heard, they were like, yeah, you know what? Season was done anyway. This is just a bonus. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. There's a lot to play for yet still. I'm not giving up yeah. on the season just like that. But anyway, so can you do it international when we come back next week? Can you get yourself up for that's... next week against Brentford who, who are decimated by injury? You want to talk about injuries, yeah? They've been decimated yeah. by injuries this season. So let's talk That's about amazing. that. So for me, is that can Eric Ten Hag, can Eric Ten Hag learn from his mistakes? Can the team learn from the mistakes? Can they come together and get, you know, the vibe, the good feel factor, use this now Facts. as momentum for the next, for the next, what, 15 games of the season? What do you think, Sai? This is the issue. You know what it is, I already know. This is the problem. We've had these kind of like games, Villa. Chelsea, where the manager looks like he's, you know what it is? It's, it's a manager when he looks like he's going to be out of a job. You know, let's be real, Nordin. That game just before Aston Villa, remember, there was another game where he felt like, you know, if he loses this game, he's he's sacked and whatnot. He wins these games, you know. So fair play to Ten Hag for having that resilience and whatnot. But ultimately, man, you know what I mean? I'm not really falling for this gimmick, man, because like I said, the league has been horrendous. You know, it's still one game. It's still... A lot, a lot of problems in this team, but you know, yesterday days like yesterday will always mask it. You know, what I mean, because at the end of the day, it's Liverpool, it's a rivalry. You don't really care about the performance, like it's not. But my thing is, like Norden, is that what's the springboard? We haven't really had that on the Tenag. We keep blaming injuries. We keep doing this. We keep doing that. Like, you know, who else is still not available? It's only going to be what you got. Luke Shaw has always been injured. You got Lissandra Martinez, and apart from that, let's be honest, man, not many. Uh, 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 available. Your know, Maguire came back, Mount came back, you know. So the, 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 this is pretty much like your fittest you're gonna get in terms of team wise. Martial's always injured anyway. So yeah, man, I feel like ultimately for me, 
we need to have this. We need to we need to have a consistency, man. We need to have a run of games. We need to start building performances. Having that feeling of you know what everyone wants to watch United because you've seen it as well already. Like to watch United now, it's just, it drags, man. Yeah, you know I mean just to see that we played that level of football yesterday, bro. That first thirty minutes as well, bro. What a game! What a flipping thirty minutes. I thought to myself, what is this? Is this United? Is this actually United playing here, or is this a different team? Yeah, you know, is this Liverpool doing to us? But we did that to them, bro. I mean, we didn't let them out of their half. We we pegged them in. It was Honestly. fast octane football, and it was something that you know what everyone was like, you know, on their seat, you know, on the you know stood up, and then you know active. The crowd were on it. They they actually they reciprocated what they felt in that ground. The energy was mad, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, but can we do that consistently? That's the issue. That is yeah. the issue, Lord. It's always yeah. been like that for One this step forward. Two steps back. Five you steps know? back times, honestly, in terms well, of... Well, there you go. Big up... There uh, you go. Uh, big up G says, no, it feels like the players are playing for contracts under Ineos for not, <laughs> not for Ten Hag. Yo, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's going to be very interesting, man. Big up... Um, yeah. Abid as says, big up to everyone having their iftar in the UK, man. Yeah, man. Big up everybody having their iftar obviously throughout the world. A lot of people have had their iftars yeah. already, man. Especially if you're in Africa. Sun way go down already. The sun's already down, mate. <laughs> so yeah. big up. Let's hope, pray that no one of the players gets injured during international break. That's another thing. But we can't just focus on, on, on injuries because you've got to have a different look at Liverpool. Look at other teams, how they're coping. Yeah. Teams are coping. So you have to come out and have a fight and have a squad. And for me, Sati, my biggest criticism is that he's still not mm. learning about how to get like Ganacho, like take him off 2 0 against them. Um, yeah. 2 0 against yeah, Everton. True, man. Get the it's players true. off the pitch. Like do certain things, freshen it up. Get everybody else off the bench involved in it. Get people involved in it. This ain't the area divisor, man. This ain't the area divisor. Get stop running players to death. You know what I mean? Yep. Don't do it. Get so, them off. yeah. But you know what it is though, because because obviously what impact they have and that, and obviously our guys don't have that impact. You know, I mean, for some reason, sometimes they don't do that and whatnot. He keeps them on for the longest, man. You know what I mean? He runs them to the ground, and I think ultimately it is gonna it's gonna be because obviously I don't know if you heard about, it, but Ganacho had a hamstring injury in midweek or had a little bit of a, a hamstring injury. Then he only trained for two days, so that that right there is something that you know you gotta be careful, man. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna burn these kids out. You're yeah, looking at Milo went off, but yeah, man, he, he, Ganacho is that weapon that he believes he still needs to have on the football pitch, but it can be a detriment to your season. And that's what it's been like the case for so long. Look at the Casemiro injury. I don't know where that's come from. Apparently that's come from training, training ground learning. And Brazil, Brazil have come out and said, oh, he's injured and he's not playing for Brazil. But that that's something that, you know what, you've got to be careful, man. Because, you know, we can't be having too many injuries in the season, bro. Because we've got 10 games left now. And we need to be on it for the last 10 games. Let's be real. We need to be on it for the last 10 games. 100%. You know what I'm saying? So, 100%. 100%. We need to be on it. We definitely need to be on it for the next 10 games. And next 10, maybe 13 games. Uh, if you add the, the two games in the cup, if you get to the final. But yeah. It's going to be, listen, it's not going to be easy. But for me... I'm just like, he has to learn quickly. This manager has to learn. ASAP, yeah. you can't burn players out. You can't mm. burn players out, man. You cannot. Yep. You cannot do that to players. You have mm. to change it. You have to freshen it up in the games. Rest players when your cobbler goals are up in the game. And he doesn't do it, yep. Saeed. He doesn't. And that's no. why, honestly, I'm just like, is this papering over the cracks, this win? And I'm hoping it's not. Mm. I hope and pray. I'm a United hope, fan. Hope, I'm a United hopefully. fan. We want United to be successful. Please believe me. I want mm. nothing more than Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag, doing what he's doing. But I just hope and pray that he's learned and that the, that the, some of the senior players think, you know what, we need to come together and other people have to play. And I hope that he can mm. now trust players like Ahmad because Ahmad came yeah. in and bailing him out, mate. Bailing him out. Bailing him out yeah. there and then when he needed it. So, you know what? That's gonna true, be just, you know. But that's but that's just the thing, though. You need to have that trust in the in the players and the confidence. You know what I mean? And that's something that we haven't been able to see for so long, Dorian. Really, is that you know the ability to trust players when you need to trust players, the ability to kind of help people when they need to. I mean, you haven't seen that. You haven't seen that, Dorian. Really. And that's something that the manager needs to instill within the players. You know. So ultimately, you know, for me, 
you know, can we go on another run? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, man. Because, you know, we've done this before. Three-game run, lose to Fulham out of nowhere. You know, that Fulham loss came out of nowhere. The mentality of the players is still brittle, man. It's still very, very low, man. Like, the mentality for me, like, it's not there yet, man. Still not there yet. By the way, I think it's time to, to have your time, bro. I think so it's half past, you know, started, you know. It's half past, you know. Are you sure? No, nah, mine is 22, look. you know. 22, mine, you know. Yo, yeah, it's 22. crazy. I've got, I've got the wrong one here. It says 6.30. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, anyway, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's good. It's 22. Is it 22? Let's do it. No, I need to drink yeah. water, man. Yo, big up, man. Iftar. Happy Iftar, people. Yeah, big up, man. Big up, people. Yeah, man. Still alive. Still alive. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, big up, people, man. Smash a like while you're there, man. Smash a like. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, 100%, man. 100%. Listen, we go on this free game. Free game run, whatnot. To see where it goes, man. But I'm just glad we won, man. Two week international break, relax, man. None of this stress and just relax. Your birthday as well. By the way, oh yeah, I forgot about that. You finally beat Scousers before your birthday, or is it the one after? Is it the one because you got Liverpool coming up? Is it this one? Yeah, yeah. It's this one. When's your birthday? Twentieth. Twentieth or twenty second? No, no, no. It's, it's a couple of days time. It's three days time. Wow. You finally beat the Scouts before you... For those I don't know yeah, during his birthday... Always, always falls on. Always falls just before his birthday. And he end up get, he end up losing, basically, didn't it? Last time 7-0, last time this. And finally, finally you've won. That's crazy, you know, when you deep it. I'm always on a downer, mate. Man United always let me down, but not this time. But now you can enjoy your birthday. Nice. You can enjoy your birthday. In, in good style, yeah, man. man. So big up to yeah, you, bro. Yeah, big up. Yo, big up Peter, man. Alien Ted, I've not seen you in the chat for ages, man. I hope you're well. Is it big up Nuri yeah. Saeed? Got five brothers, all scousers. <laughs> the, kind, <laughs> the kind of whoop ass was glorious. Oh, my God. Alien Ted, you must have been talking to your brothers. But I bet they're all ignoring you, Alien Ted. I bet they're all ignoring you. Big up to you, man. Big up, Tom. How you doing, Tom? There you go, lads. How are you Tom. Tom, the you question is me. simple, man. Where are you, first of all? International man of mystery. Double O Tom, where <laughs> are you? I mean, I mean, with the amount of locations I've got to, you might as well have a fucking treasure in the in the comments, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Big up, Tom. Correct, correct comment gets a shout out. No, we're in the we're in Sheffield for today. Well, it's in the Seven Hills. Was it lovely and mm. sunny like it was in Manchester today? Oh, it no, yeah. no, it was quite cold today, to be honest with you. Oh, it didn't piss me down with rain. Yeah. Big up to you, Tom, man. <laughs> Big up to you. So, Tom, Unlucky. the question is simple, yeah? Mm. I'll be having a good day even if you're in the seven hills of cold Sheffield. But big up to you. And uh, I will, will say this. What? We're asking the question, can Eric Tanag and the players use to basically... Can Eric Tanayton use the momentum, the, the feel-good factor, the energy from this cup game, mm. from this massive win of beating one of the big teams in the league this season, with 17 points behind them? Can they use it for the rest of the season? Can they harness that energy? Can they do it, Tom? That's the question. They have to, because what else do we have? Have we, haven't got, we haven't got anything else. And listen, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I said it weeks and months ago. Spurs, for me even regardless of the fixture against Fulham, they get it right in games because they play decent football and they're consistent with it. They play one way, yep. win, lose or draw. Man United, you don't know what you're going to get. You'll get like what we got yesterday, which the message that the manager, any manager in, who's, a Liverpool, who's in the Liverpool or Man United dugout, the only thing realistically in that sort of game that you have to ask for is passion, desire and work rate. That's the key element. Tactics go tactics in, in certain aspects of the game goes out the window. First 20 minutes in the Liverpool Man United game, completely different. Whether it's at Anfield or at OT, it's all about who wants it more, who's want who wants to stick the tackles in, who wants to make it rough and tough. That's what these games are about. And none of this may like people criticise it and everything anyway, but none of this made up bullshit that City and Liverpool are rivals and that listen, they've been rivals for five years. We've been rivals for fucking Liverpool for centuries, so it's complete. It's completely different. But if we base it off of 
the way that we played yesterday, like I said before, first 20 minutes, I thought we were immense. High pressing, high energy, the passion was there, the desire was there. It was like, we're not going to let Liverpool win today. We're, we're, not, we're not fucking going to be embarrassed today. And it was the sort of attitude that we should have had when we lost 7-0 to Liverpool in that second half and capitulated. That's the attitude that we needed in that second half when you're in a hostile environment. Fair enough, you were in a sort of care bear environment at, at OT with your own fans. But listen, it was about redemption for a lot of players yesterday. I do. I, and I think, um, especially in terms of maybe players that we have criticised for a couple of weeks, they come good for us on, on one occasion. But that's the thing that I say, guys. Listen, it's one game. It's one game. There's no True. point in playing True. the way that you have done against Liverpool and then you go to somewhere like, I don't know, fucking Brighton on the seaside and you lose 3 0 or something, or something shocking. There's no point if you can't follow it up. But I've always said this anyway about us. When it comes to a big occasion or a, a game where it's almost like he has to win it, he gets the, he gets the result. Chelsea earlier in the season, he had to win the game because we'd lost like three or four games. He won it. In, our, in arguments, the City game was very better from us mm. from a defensive aspect. It took two wonder goals from Phil Foden. They come, they didn't deconstruct us in the game. We were, in many senses, we actually competed with City in the game more than we have done in recent years. And in the same mm. case with Liverpool and Anfield, and in this game, we've competed with them. But it's not going to, like I've said before to people, this nostalgia that everybody's getting hyped around, you've won 4-3, Fine, I can accept it. Listen, I made my comments yesterday. Liverpool fans, don't cry over it, mate. We gave you, you got your quad yesterday. We gave you fucking four goals. Listen, cl- pull this fucking quad in all them interviews. I think he's like Saeed, he's on the crutches, mate. <laughs> but at the, end, at the end of the day, if we want to go, if we want to go down with the basics of it, football in the way that we all view it from different generations, that's the sort of game that you want to see at Old Trafford: competitiveness, a bit of desire, a bit of fight. But take Liverpool away from it. Do that against every single team from game one to game 38. Oh. And only and the best it, teams Tom, in this, this league, only the best teams in this league do it to that level for 38 games that even get a chance of winning the title. You can do it to 38 games and still not win it because Manchester City are that immense and that excellent. Liverpool approved that for three seasons. They went toe to toe all the way to the running line and they only won one out of the three of them that they had that sort of scenario with. So at the end of the day, it's fine from the players' aspects. Yeah, you get a bit of confidence back into the players and everything. Yeah, go on international duty, go and do what you've got to do, whatever. But when you come back and you play in the next game, mate, I pray, I pray you play the exact uh, same way. Because if you stink the gaff out, we're, we're all going to be sitting here saying the same thing. It's not sustainable, yada, yada, yada. But as much as people want to put praise on different areas and everything, listen, yesterday it was a rivalry. So I can understand the players and the fight and the desire that they showed. Yesterday, as much as if people want to say that was a Ten Hag masterclass and tactical mag- magnifico, it wasn't. It was a game of two halves. It was an M- it was an NBA match, and we were on the better side of it for a change. That's it. But Liverpool are normally the team that outscore teams in those scenarios. So I'm happy for us in this instance. But at the end of the day, follow it up. That's all I ask from these players. Follow it up. Exactly. Yeah, you know what, you know what it's Tom though. That's the thing though. I think that's the consistency we're looking for. You know, follow it up with a with a with a with a string of results. This you know fair. what I mean and whatnot. And and like I said, to be fair, this season I think we've only lost to Fulham and who else? I can't remember. Uh, Man City we lost to, but it's the performances though that's been kind yeah. of you know not leading to results. You know what I mean? And that's where we said it's not sustainable. You need performances to kind of get you over the line, and that is something that you know. The team hasn't been able to do. But, you know, you've got Brentford, you've got Chelsea, and you've got Liverpool again. Another three games in a row where you're like, you know, it's like Groundhog Day again. You know, so I just hope that these guys are just not thinking going to beaches. You know, when they go on the beaches at, around this time when you've got nothing to play for and in the league or they, mm-hmm. they feel like top four is done. you got to have that element of pride, man. Everyone should be on scrutiny right now. Everybody's job should be magnified now because it's like, Yo, you can't be just turned up for one game and then shouting, United, United, we love this club. And the next, you know, you're not performing the next game. Like the Brentford games are the ones that, for me, 
yeah, Liverpool game means more to everyone, but the Brentford games are the ones where, you know, the habits, you know, the bad it habits. It defines if anything's changed. That's, yeah. That's where yeah, you see man. It. Especially like yeah, when, we saw, when we lost 4 0 to them at their calf. Even this season, yeah. when, we, when we played Brentford, let's be honest, right? They played an absolute piss poor, they played an absolute excellent game, and we were piss poor at Old Trafford. And McTominay had to come off the bench and in Shalar, and he got two goals. Like, we were all giddy about it and everything because we've won the game in, in Fergie time, but it wasn't anything to gloat about. There was no happiness towards it, at least with this. You can sit there and say the team actually gave something and they deserved to win, arguably, in the game. But it's the sort of games, guys, that we don't get enough of. And Mm. this is why we've criticised Eric Ten Hag for the longest time. Listen, forget stats, forget where we are on the table and all this other shite and everything. The main focus for a lot of Manchester United fans for years now has been they want to see good football. They want to see games like that week in, week out at at OT. But arguably, they want to see us pummel the opposition team and not be pummeled back. That's what we want to see. But in terms of the element of the game, in terms of tactics, it was out the window. I remember one time we had four forwards and we had four four defenders. There was nobody in midfield and supposedly I just fucking ran about 20 yards. There wasn't wasn't a player 20 yards within him at all. So if you want to talk about tactics and masterclasses and everything, it was no Mm. it was no magnifiable you know, solution. It wasn't brilliant. No, no. It was end to end and we got on the better end of it. That's it. But the fact that it was against Liverpool, even more fucking better. But yeah, yeah. Listen, listen. Happy birthday to you, Diego Dalot, man. Honestly, yeah, big up. one of the best players this season, but let's see if he continues. I'm very critical because I expect a lot more from him. Because when he went to alone to AC Milan, do you remember? He was cooking in I AC know, I know, Milan. I know, quality, it's quality, it's yeah, quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quality. He's doing this in AC Milan. People smash a like on the video. So happy birthday to him. Come on, man. He's a match baby like me. You know what I mean? Go on, Diego, lad. Show the passion. And we just need you to, to start playing better. But to me, it's that you have to be consistent. You can for a couple of months. What's the point in finding form for a couple of months and then the rest of the month just looking mm. terrible? That's true, man. So, it's true. Me, you know, that's, that's, no, but the thing is with Delo, yeah, Lord, I've, I've been critical because I think sometimes his awareness off the ball, his mentality sometimes get the best of him. And I'm like, you're doing mistakes that I feel like, you know, should be ironed out by now at your mm. age, 24, 25. So that's where I always look at Luke Sean. Uh, sorry, Delo. I'm like, come on, man, let's do better. You know, yeah. and that's something that I want because I know how, like, how good he can be. So when you know how good he can be, you kind of say to yourself, well, I'm sick and tired of these mistakes because I'm like, they should be out of your game by now. But as a player, I've, I've said it, as a footballer, he's unbelievable. Like, as a player, yeah, ball yeah. carrying, like, you know, taking the ball, you know what I mean, driving with it, you know, technically passing, mm-hmm. like, he's good. You know, it's just yeah. like defensively, this is a problem as a right-back, yo, you're judged first defensively as well. Because that's what, you know, you are a defender. He's a defender, but, yeah, that's it. Yeah, but, man. <laughs> but listen, Sorry, yeah. sorry, anyway, in terms of all these people that I've seen on social media and everything, people send me shit load, loads every single day and everything. People who are getting gassed and saying, oh, we should keep McTominay based upon what they saw yesterday. Listen, it's one yeah. game. People who are getting hurt, people are sitting there saying, oh, if somebody come in and give you 50 million for Scott McTominay, you wouldn't take it. Fucking hell, I'd bite the hands off. Are you kidding me? With the way that we're run as a, as a football club and financially, football is a yeah. business as much as it is a sport. And Manchester United right now, we've, fa- we've failed on the football aspect and we're crippled financially on the business aspect. So use your gains that you've maybe had from this season. Listen, you can get a player who's, who's technically gifted, better on the ball than Scott McTominay, who is defiable yep. as being a midfielder. Like you're saying with Diogo Delot, Saeed, in terms of yeah. is he defiably a right-back because his, mo- his best work is in the final third which more or less contributes to him being more of a wide player, a wing, mm. a wing back or a right a right wing or whatever, than it would be to be a defender. But he's developed the defensive side of the game, which is what we've needed to see. But in, on terms of the, the in, in terms of our team, when people talk about balance, mate, there's no balance at all anywhere. We are completely one-sided on a weighing scale. The right-hand side is peppered constantly in terms of you either... The left hand side, the only thing that's good on the left hand side is Marcus Rashford. That's it. Luke yeah. Shaw, we've not seen for large parts this season. Malassia, I don't know. He's gone in hiding. He's in witness protection or some shit. I don't know. I've not seen the guy for. I've not seen the guy for months. 
Is and it Kate it Middleton? Who made Kate Middleton, mate? But like I say, guys, is this it is what I'm saying. Is it fucking your palace, game, mate? It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference in terms of one game. If you want to judge, say, Scott McTominay from now to the end of the season, if he plays the exact same way, yeah. fair enough. There's an argument for it. But consistency is key. If you're not consistent in the Premier League, you get fuck all. It's clear as day. Yep. Last season, we were very consistent in terms of the results. We grinded games out. So we were consistently getting points. But performances, even last season, guys, we were a bit like, oh, I, I don't know. We rode the wave in a lot of games. But we made it, made, made, we made ends meet on terms of the points tally that we got from last season. This season was completely has been completely different. There's no performances has been out the window. It's let's just try and fucking win. And then Eric Ten Hag in the press conference, press conference or post match interview, just bullshit and say about XG mm. and possession and this, that, the other, and play, player, you know, qualities and that. But if we're basing it here and now, Eric Ten, Eric Ten Hag in terms of what he did yesterday. Yes, he got the result that he needed, but he needs consistency from his players. Consistency. And the only way you get yep. consistency from the players is sharpness, attitude, focus, and coaching. He doesn't have to. Yep. He doesn't have to play Champions League games and fly to here, there, and everywhere, Lapland and fucking all these places. He can focus with the players now. So build a plan, Eric Ten Hag, from now to the end of the season. You've got two weeks. Two weeks now, Eric. Build some. You can build something. You can plan something with your staff. To last us from now to the end of the season. I'm just, but, I'm just pissed off. There's an international break, man. If it wasn't, then I would have loved him to go to Dubai or something and do some warm weather training. Maybe some sort of individual plan. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. something so, like that. But... They had the chance to do that a couple of weeks ago, did they not? When there was that. Yeah, break. they didn't. They Arsenal chose went. To... Arsenal went to Dubai. City went to uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, Liverpool, I think, went to Austria. Like, man, not all of our we... players are going to do international, though. So why can't he take the players? Why can't he take the players who are not well, international? There you go. Mason Mount. I'll take the players We've got no there. money. We're broke, mate. We're broke. Listen, instead, <laughs> we're sending Martinez. Tax evasion. We're sending, we're sending Martinez to Argentina. Why are we sending an injured player to Argentina? You know what? Why can I, can I do something, it? by the way? You know, by the way, yeah, just to let you know, Gabriel is not going to Brazil, yeah, because he's mm. staying with Arsenal, by the way. I think um, De Bruyne is going to be staying as well. But it is, you know what, when I look at him more and more now, maybe it is odd now that he's going to Argentina. But then again, I'm only thinking, is there summer now? In Argentina, I'm sure it's their summer and it's our winter. You know what I mean? So mm. for them, it's like South Africa is summer for them. So he's probably thinking, I'm probably going to get better weather over there to do my rehabilitation better. I don't know. Maybe that's well, the truth. Oh, he wants to go party. Element, <laughs> say, the, the competitive element, because if he goes over there, and some, you know, dickhead Argentinian player or whatever goes full throttle yeah. into a tackle with him and breaks his leg. Well, what's the argument going to come from Man United's case? We've lost the yeah, defender for the season. Argu true. And arguably, we don't even know when he's going to come back anyway. Exactly like we know with a lot of these players. This is how piss poor our medical department is. We can't even put timestamps on when players are coming back. Mason Mount, we only just learned yesterday, was even just going to be on the bench. We was hearing yeah. a couple of days ago, it was weeks we were going to have to wait for him to come back. Malassia, I've said before, and like I say, I think the guy's in witness protection, he's in hiding somewhere. I've not seen the guy <laughs> anywhere. He wasn't even spotted at the meal that they went for in Manchester, mate. Like. No, so, he wasn't. At the, I at think the he was in day, Holland. I think he's in Holland. I think he's in, in Holland. Holland but this is what I mean. This is what I mean, reason, though, right? With players, listen, Ten Hag must know some sports facilities or someone in fucking the Netherlands. The guy's an elite football coach. Go and take the players that you have right yep. now, even if you take some of the youngsters, Fletcher's lads and fucking Cobby Mino and whoever else, who's not going on that to, who's not going on the international duty, take them on a jet, take them over to the Netherlands or wherever, Dubai, Spain, wherever, and go and do some warm weather training with them. Listen, there's loads of sports facilities in Portugal, Spain, the Algarve, France. There's loads of them. If you want to go and use one, and listen, as much as we can joke about it, like I made the joke that we're broke as a football club. Listen, in terms of how we run as a club, based upon the training facilities that we have right now, they're not going to develop with what we have right now. Take them away mm. for two weeks in a different environment and work on a new plan. Style of play, whatever. Structure, do whatever. But Yeah. Yeah, big up. Listen, big up structure, big up, style big of play. Listen, <laughs> listen, big up to Aid. Um, 
Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your um if that, yeah yeah bro. big up man you. Big, big up lads man we'll catch up soon man yeah man Tom big up to you man thanks for coming on man yeah man listen Tom the biggest thing for me is like Martinez I'm not letting Martinez go anywhere I'm unless the club sanctioned it and sends their own visuals with them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah, yeah I understand what you're saying. Or one of his reps or something. Exactly. Like, you've got to protect the player like in terms of, like I said before, Nuddin, football, it's not only just a sport, it is a business. You've got to protect the liability of the player. If you get Martinez back, a lot of Manchester United fans are going to be a lot more confident in games. I'm sure Eric Ten Hag will be a lot more confident if he has Martinez at the back in a lot of the games from now to the end of the season. But if he doesn't, and like we said, Nuddin, he goes over there and he blows a tendon or whatever, Achilles, and... What are we, what's the situation then going to be? Oh, well, we sent him over there for rehabilitation purposes or competitive training. Warm, you know, like Saeed was saying about with the climate and everything. Like, there's going to be some bullshit PR that will come out to defend the case for it. You, strict liability, Manchester United's medical department, if they are as highly qualified as they should be, either make the decision and say, you're not flying, or make the decision and say, yeah, you can go, but I'm coming with you. And I want to, and I want to see the rehabilitation to make sure you're not being put under duress or pressure. But the problem is, there isn't. We're not built like that. We don't have these top decision makers in our football club who will turn around and say to the player, "You're not going." It's as simple as that. You're not going. And if it means that you pissed off Martinez, you pissed off Martinez. Make the decision to protect your players. And if you're not prepared to do it in the job that you're in at the biggest football club in the world, you shouldn't work there. It's as simple as that. And I hope for Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Brailsford's case and everything, in terms of where they know about performance and recovery and everything, with cycling, with cycling and all the different sports, I hope they look at the department that we have at Man United and think, it's not fit for purpose. We'll get rid of it all. Start from scratch. The Arsenal doctor even that we brought in, um, guys, Gary o, uh, O'Driscoll, he's already sacked three people from the medical department. He sacked the um, physio guy who's just leaving now. And I think he's uh, got rid of two more people. He's brought in. He's looking at bringing in a, a head of science sport to be his deputy or a deputy head of that, uh, science sport. And at the end of the day, with how we've been run as a football club for so many years, we don't run on data. We run on, like you've said many a times and everything, we run on a ballot sheet. That's how our football clubs run. It shouldn't be like that. Football has changed. It's analytics, it's data, it's it's everything to do with sports, science, everything. The yeah. fine margins define if you get that extra point in a, tit- in a title race to win the league or lose it. We are Fact. not fit to win league titles, but you can be fit to win league titles if you have proper decision makers who, for example, make the decision on Martinez and say, Listen, you're not going. We're protecting the liability of you as our asset and our player, and we're protecting right. you for your own personal rehabilitation. But nobody has the bollocks to do it. And they just let players do what they want. And we've seen this story many, many a time. We get a quality player in the donor within, and what happens to them? We get one bad injury that leaves them out for five, six months. What happens? Yeah. Luke Shaw's an example. What yeah. happens? The talent burns out of the kids. They're gone. See you later. And then they don't fulfil what the player that they should be. You know what? It's going to be very interesting to see. Big up to though. Let me just get some of these chats, man. Big up to Khalifa Medina for yeah. United United Real Therapy. Windy says here, um, when players criticise when they come out and when they're speaking up against intense trading and that they're causing the muscle injuries. Yeah, that's got something to do with it. Diego, Dal- yeah. uh, Diego Dalo- uh, sorry, Amadiallo says, yes, I'm fasting today. It's not easy when you're fasting. You need to believe in yourself. Um... I fast for God. I'm very happy to fast. I want to fight for the team uh, if I'm on the pitch. So thanks God to this moment. Yeah, big up to him. And then yeah. Ian Wright it was obviously talking about Ian Wright was talking about Kobe Menu saying that he should be. But I'm glad he's not included in the England because I don't want the yeah, England workers to be part of it. I genuinely don't. Mm. Uh, but big up Eski, big up Windy, big up to Tans, big up Stephanie, big up to all the regulars, man. Apparently, I had two operations for the first one. It didn't go well with Malasia. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's been our season. The same thing happened to Martinez. Same thing's happened to Martinez. Yeah, man, yeah, honestly. Exactly. To me, well, even I would call yeah. into, into question uh, uh, or, or Gristle's position as well. I'm calling everybody into question. Um, yeah. Kudos to Aaron Mazak coming back for, after months out of start. 
left back position up, um, opposite Salah. It's not a usual position. Yeah, yeah, man. He's not. But I was frustrated with him still off on the ball sometimes yesterday. I'm traumatized at times, man. <laughs> I wish Ian Wright should shut up about men who England. I don't want him in England set up. Why does Ian Wright ask when Ben White does represent England? <laughs> Leave our players alone. Yeah, man, I agree with that. Big up to Uncle Uncle Ian though. Big up Wrighty. But I agree. We don't want the motion that the, all the circus that comes with being England player, Tom. You know that's well done. Yeah, you? of course. It's, it, it comes with it. Yeah, it's a but, it's a pressure move though for players. And the fr- listen, it took. He didn't when we had the situation with Bellingham where he was emerging from Birmingham and then he did what he did at Dortmund to then get his sort of profile up and everything. At the time, England they didn't just pick him and say, "Listen, you come in here and you're going to work with the England set up for." Mums and mums, but I hope if Gareth Southgate in the future does pick him, that it's not just going to be let's pick him. He's a talented player. Throw him in there against fucking Lithuania and all these different countries and everything. Actually, steady, stag, steady, and stagger him into the team, and do what in many cases what he's done with say Foden and Saka and a lot of the younger England players, where he didn't just play them and burnt the talent out of them when the expectations got so high. That's large parts what Bakayo Saka anyway said about him missing the penalty in the Euros final was it was the pressure. I was a young player. I was inexperienced at the time. I hadn't had those big moments in football and I didn't know how to deal with it. And the goalkeeper in that case, who was uh, Gianluca Donnarumma, was more experienced than what Bakayo Saka was. He knew the game. He knew how to get into young players' mind. And he got into Bakayo Saka's mind with, with a penalty miss. And arguably, this is what I'm saying with players that could be mine now. Protect the kid, wrap him in cotton wool because we've got a good one. If you want to put him in the England squad, that's fine. Consultate with Gareth Southgate, Steve Holland, a lot of them in England and say, listen, we need the kid for our for Manchester United. We want him to have a staggered international career, but take him step by step, put him on the bench, maybe give him a couple of minutes here and there, then actually start maybe playing him in a couple of games and everything. And then Nuruddin... If he's ready and he still does the progression that he has right now in terms of for Manchester United, let him go to that World Cup squad in a couple of years' time. Let him go to that England World Cup camp. Go with them. That's fine. I don't have an issue with that. But stagger him into the England settle. Don't just put the kid in there in high-pressure situations and then expect him to be magical because you'll burn the potential out of players far, far easier. And Gareth Southgate, listen, listen to an England conversation anyway, and we're getting a bit sidetracked. He's had a golden generation of young players that have flourished in England right now and he's failed because he hasn't won anything with them as of yet. He has to win the Euros right now to sustain that he's actually done something with this crop of players that he has because there's so much talent there and there's even more talent coming through like sort of, with players like Kobe Mino and like we've seen anyway with other players that are coming through the ranks. But like we say with Manchester United, in the same case that we just said with Martinez and with him, Protect Cobby Mino. If you don't want the kid to go, say you're not going, mate. Or, like I said before, consultate with England, with the reps at um, St George's Park, and just say, listen, if you're taking him there, that's fine. None of this intense BS and all this, that, the other. If you're, not, if you're going to play the guy, fair enough. Notify us that he's going to play. But if you're not going to play him, just let him have a staggered recovery. Because the kid's played X, Y, Z minutes or whatever, and he's not used to this high performance. Put your case forward for your players and defend them. And I can't remember who it was. I think it was Shea Ariano who put in the comments anyway. City did it with Haaland when he went to um, he went away with Norway. Similarly, Nurin, anyway. He was injured for Manchester City. Norway called him up for the international squad. Well, Manchester City sent their two most experienced medical and physios, uh, medical men and physios, over to Norway with him and they did staggered recovery. And reportedly, anyway, and this is more inside Man City anyway. If you went for um if you went for it, Haaland was actually supposed to be out for four months. Because he did light recovery for two weeks in a different environment, really, it actually saved him a month. So he was only out for three months. So they ended up getting the player back before the end of the season. That's that and that's what I'm call, saying, really. Liability for your players, protect them. They're not as much as we as much as the Glazers look at these players as assets and pawns in a bigger game of chests. They are they are human as well. You protect the players, or you get what we had last season, Nuridin, where we try and fight on all fronts. You burn the players out, and then you have what you have this season. You've got nobody. You've got absolutely nobody. 
Yeah, hundred so percent. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Big up, big up to drivers. Big up Eski. Big up everybody in the chat. No, hundred percent. If you know the Dodgy Doctor, Dodgy Doctor. Listen, rest. May he, may he rest in peace. Um, he's been killed. R.I.P. to the to the Palestinian mm. football team captain who was killed today. Well, killed recently. Listen, the genocide is still going on, man. The genocide is still going on. Do what you can. Where does mm. One of the things that first came out of Gaza was that police is a genocide against us. Please let people know. So let people know what's going on of that part of the world. But in terms of the football, yeah, hundred percent to me, is that I don't like players being allowed to go anywhere because I'll never forget what um, Raniak said. Raniak was like, "Why is Pogba in Dubai, and why is he getting other people to look after him in terms of like he's got his own people without somebody else being there with him?" And he gave the impression that nobody else from the club was with him. So when you give the example of Man City, they're a well-run from oil machine. They're a well-run club. Mm. Um, you know what I mean? And it's just frustrating. It's frustrating. It's absolutely frustrating. But listen, I'm still eating here, fasting all day, bringing the stream to you. The least you could do, smash a like on the video, mm, subscribe to the be. channel. We're shadow banned because we shout for the against the. We shout against the oppressors who are controlling a lot of this social media stuff, and we shout for the oppressed. So please smash a like on the on, on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. We're gonna to try to get to 10k before the end of the season. It's the least that you could do for the channel and the community. Um, so big up to everybody always interacting and, and chatting. And it's one of the only channels in the world where we genuinely interact as a community with a chat. So Tom, the let the the last. Uh, last topic I'll say is that Amadiallo, me personally, deserves football. What else does he have to do to get in this team? And why is Eric Tanang not learning from burning players out from last last season? Why has he not learned that yet, Tom? Why is Amadiallo has to... He's got the quality. We can all see it. The technique, the ability, mm. the technical, the tactical ability, the pressing. Big up to me now. Big, check out, Bears, by the way, um, Straight Jacket podcast on Saeed's channel. We just did it before. I'm check Saeed out tonight. I think he's in the big six later on tonight. But at the end of the day, um, like he knows how to press. He won the ball yesterday in, off, off the ball. He was as impressive off the ball as he was on the ball. So mm. why is he not getting chances, Tom? It just seems a mystery to me, man. No, well, we've said, we've said it for weeks anyway. Even when Anthony was starting games and everything, we just felt it was strange and Sancho had been, you know, exiled from the squad. Why we hadn't even just integrated him at any point in the season. I know he's been in, injured for large parts of it and everything. That's fine. But I'm sorry, with Eric, with Eric Tanag, if you're an elite football coach and you look week in, week out in training, day in, day out, and you put Anthony on the on the right hand side in say on one pitch, and you put Ahmad Diallo on one on the other side in the right wing position on a on a separate pitch. There's no comparison in terms of directness. Directness. The thing Man United have lacked for years in terms of our wide players is nobody wants to challenge. Nobody wants to take people on. Listen, it's fine. Flicks and tricks. Do your little spinny, twirly fucking thing, Anthony. That's fine. I'm not. I'm not asked about that. If you do that and you beat a player, I can't give a shit. That's fine. But in terms of the basics, right now, when you're not playing well in football, or you not you're low on confidence, the best form of um, is it the best sort of way forward for you is just do the basics. Do the basics correctly. Put some spam some balls in the box. Listen. As much as people want to criticise Anthony and say, and I, I've even done it, and say that he doesn't have a right foot. Listen, I saw him put some crosses in with his right foot yesterday. In. There weren't any anything brilliant. There weren't Trent Alexander-Arnold or Kevin De Bruyne standard. Nowhere near. But clip the ball in like he was doing. Spam crosses. Do what you've got to do. That's all we've been saying to the guy. If it doesn't work, fair enough. That's fine. But keep trying. There's no point in, in, in games where you see players sulk and their heads down and this, that, the other. Listen, Fernandez, mate, whenever we went behind the game, like a fucking petulant child. At the end of the day, don't lose your composure, lads. If you, if it's not going well for you, stick to basics. Pass the ball around a bit, one twos, sharpen up, one two past the past the defender, the fullback, whatever. Stick a ball in with your right foot. You can do it. Every football player in in terms of football can be developed at the elite level. There's a there's a certain element of development that you can give players. A coach out there 
would identify with Anthony, right, if he's more one-sided with his left foot, when we're doing training, you know, there's no left foot. There's no left foot, Anthony. What? No, there's no left foot. You don't use left foot at all. You don't touch the ball with your left foot, your right foot only. And the exact same for Ahmad Diallo, who was left-footed as well. There's no left foot, Ahmad. Right foot, right foot only. Beat the player. Beat the player with your right foot. And they won't. And he wouldn't do it. Ahmad Diallo, fair enough, he might do. I don't know. But in ter- in terms of what we said now about Diallo, we've said for many many years he needs a coach to come in who's actually going to play him, give him a couple of games, and let's see what the kid's about. When we saw him in that highlight game when he scored that goal at Wolves, you know, a couple of years ago, we were all sitting here praising the kid. When he scored, when he when he'd been at Atalanta on loan and everything, uh, sorry, when we bought him from Atalanta. And he was in our youth ranks and everything. We were all raving about the guy. He was the next best thing. But we've never given the kid a chance. And if you're going to look at the squad right now, you're on the bare bones of it, Ericsson High. And if we're, I mean, we're going to face facts, right? Me, if you put Anthony and, you know, Ahmad on your chalkboard or whatever, when you're picking the team out, it's not a, there's no comparison at all. I'd pick Ahmad every single day of the week because he's direct. He'll do the hard yards. The one thing that I love about Ahmad as well, Nuridin, anyway, from what I saw yesterday, is commitment. Commitment. There were so many chances where Liverpool had to counter-attack on. Luis Diaz was shitting himself. The amount of times that Ahmad kept running back at him. Whenever he got the ball, Ahmad followed him. In, ter- in terms of it. But the thing is, Nuridin, right, the fact that this manager is so incompetent and that we've been saying it for weeks anyway, if you want to use Ahmad, you don't have to use him out wide. He's low sense of gravity and he's good with the ball at his feet. Play him in the middle. Put him in the 10. Put him in the 10. If you want to take Fernandes out of the firing line or whatever, put him in the 10. If you haven't got a number nine because you've lost Holland due to injury, put him in the false nine. I saw the guy play false nine in, the, in pre-season and he did quite well in the rhythm. But in terms of development, this is where coaches, where you can define a coach from being a good coach to an elite coach, is when they can develop players in the right way. And currently, right now, I've not seen de- any development for Ahmad at all. Based upon, he's not been given the opportunity to show the fans and everybody else what he's about. We've, listen, you know what you're going to get with Anthony every single game? You know what you're going to get with Anthony? You don't know what you're going to get with the hour because we've not seen the guy you know. But we know that the talent and potential is there. If you give him exactly what you've given Garnacho this season... Then that, and and if he doesn't perform, Nuruddin, fair enough. We can all sit here and say, right, Eric Tenag, that's fine, no problems. Give right. Garn- give the, give him the same amount of games that Garnacho has had. Ten, I think he, I think at one point he played ten games in a row. Give him ten games in a row, and if he doesn't score more than, give him goals, score more than three, four goals and four or five assists or something like that in games. I'm had, right? Then I'll give you your chance. Then you've got to earn it again. But the fact is that you don't want to put the kid out there, I don't know why. Why? We don't just give people a chance. There's no style of play. There's no system. Like I said before, in parts of the game, so Bosley had, didn't have a player around him for 20 yards and he just ran at the goal. There was four players up front and four players, four or five players at the back at one point in our game. There's no ah, style of play. There's no gap, midfield in the gap. game. So if, you're gap, gonna, yeah. if, if there's no style of play, put the kid out there and just say, listen, do an ollie. Go and express yourself. Go play, lad. This go on, go and express yourself. But yeah, listen, we're, not gonna know, we're not ever going to know until you give the kid the chance. Like this we were that. never going to know what Garnacho was going to do in big performance games in the Premier League until you give the guy a chance. He needs one of the a most, chance. One of the most technically gifted. And I genuinely hope that you're wrong, Kelly's from Medin Lassie. That he's not going to get in the Donny treatment. I really hope that we don't lose his talent because... For me, yesterday, what was so impressive, like I said, Tony Mowbray, mm. Mina, Mina loves football. Mina watches football. Go and check her channel out. Mina's uh, football, watches football, I think yeah, that's her channel. And she was saying that Tony Mowbray worked with him on uh, on his defensive part of his game, how to yeah. be strong. Because to play in the, to, to be successful in the championship, you have to be strong. You have oh, to, yeah. It's one of the most physically demanding leagues in world football. One of the toughest leagues every... Every three days is a game. You play on a Saturday or a Friday, and then you mm-hmm. play on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and then back on it on a Saturday. It's yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. And you look at like what Coventry's done now, where they've had the run to the semi-final, the FA Cup. You've got FA Cup on top of that. You've you've got Carabao Cup if you get so far in that competition. Like it's relentless. 
the amount of games you play in the championship. And that's why why we say what we say with a lot of our players. If you can't get players, Premier League loans, or get them a loan abroad or whatever, send them to the championship. Send them to the championship and let them go and bulk up. Because the first thing that you do in a championship club, mate, you bulk up. If you're skinny, frail and lanky, you don't come back to Manchester the exact same way. I can tell you that for a fact. And Ahmad, we said before, when we sent him to Sunderland, he needs to work on defensive attributes, like you've just said, where the coach worked on it with him. But also, he needs to bulk up a bit. Garnacho, we said the same argument for last season. He looks a bit lanky, looks a bit frail. Put a bit of weight on, bulk up a bit over the summer, and then come back and kick on this season. He's bulked up a little bit, no, isn't I'd like it a little bit more, based upon that. I know the kid's rapid. I know the guy's rapid. I know he's got an engine. Listen, he played 120 minutes and he still burst away from everybody at the end of the game. So I know the kid's got the got the pace to burn away from players. Bulk yeah. him up a bit, so he's got, he's going to be solid and he's not going to be get backed into by centre halves or full backs, whatever. But the fact of that we don't give players like Ahmad a chance, and even if you want to look at it from a business perspective, Aaron, we spent nearly 40 million on the guy, 40 million on a young player. We spent and we've done nothing with him. And we talk about how much Man United waste money. If you're not going to play the guy, I hope and pray for Ahmad's sake, in, ter- in terms of his own development or the people who are in and around him, his camp, or his age, whatever, I hope for their sake, if he doesn't get some game time over this season or next season, t- tell whoever the manager is, if it's Ten Hag or whoever else, fuck off, see you later. I d- I'm, not gonna waste my- I'm not going to waste my career being not even a bench warmer, guys. He doesn't even make the bench sometimes. He needs football. He needs football. He, he needs, needs football. football. If you weren't going to play him now, you should have sent him out on loan. Yeah. Send him out Listen, on loan. It's a big up to Tom. I'll just say this, uh, Manchester United 58 said, yeah, we saw it for half an hour. We saw the style of play and the intensity and the aggression for the first half an hour. But that's against Liverpool. Where was it against Bournemouth? Where was it against West Ham? Away? Where was it against Fulham? There was nowhere to be seen. We're not consistent, Manchester United, 1958. So it's there. It's there to see. Eric Ten Hag, this team have got a lot to prove. And I hope and pray and wish them all luck that they can use this win, take them to the next level in terms of mm. this season, rescue the season. Amber did book about Sunderland. We remember how he did it at Rangers. It was diff- he was a different player, 100%. So for me, you have to get a chance. He has to get a chance, 100%. He must be given a chance at Manchester United. Because I thought we spent 35 million on him, 100%. What were we talking about, Nura? I joined late. We were talking about Ahmed Diallo. We talked about big up DJ Superfly guy. Um, we talked about um, that kind of this football club, this players, this manager, in um, harness the energy and, um, and uh, almost kind of like the, the vibe from the, that mm, winning a huge cup tie last last night, into the rest of the season. And we talked about players like Ahmad getting it, you know, Ahmad getting more chances, because he's technically one of the most sound technical footballers. He's technically sound. And then Eric Ten Hag, let it be known in the press conference afterwards, Tom, that how he's been doing mm. this in training. He said he's deserved to get more playing time after what he's been doing in training. So why are you holding him back then? Why are you holding him back? It's not like we're playing amazing. It's all like everybody, the front six that are amazing, doing amazing things. And the thing about Ahmed Diallo, he doesn't have to play wide. He can play behind the striker. He can play as the first nine. Mm-hmm. He's already scored a big goal for Manchester. Remember during lockdown against AC Milan? He's the one that scored that header. He's got incredible technical and brain, football brain, that some of our players don't have. Give the kid a chance. That's all we're saying. But listen, people, we're going to wrap it up here there. Big up to Tom, International Man of Mystery. Make sure you give him a follow, Tom Journalist One. And make sure you check out Sati TV across mm. all social media as well. I'm seeing him on a big six tonight. He'll be cooking, man. He'll be cooking some nice, uh, some nice uh, after, you know what I mean, after iftar uh, food for the, for the rest of the guys out there. Toby's going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Toby and Grits are going to get it. But big up Grits, man. At least he had the, had the cojones to come on and... And, and and you know what I mean, and face up mm. with Saeed at the end of the, at the end of the game. So yeah, big up. And yeah, I just want to may he rest, may he rest, um, he rest internally in peace. Mm. This brother here, Mohammed uh, Baraka, is his name. Was a wonderful player. Shame FIFA UEFA letting Israel clubs compete in the competition. It's just an absolute shameful. 
It's absolute shameful. The Western countries have been exposed for what they are. They've been exposed for what they are because they kick Russia out of the, the, the championships and the World Cup qualifiers. And Israel is doing a genocide against the Palestinians. And the Israeli teams are allowed to play. It's absolutely shambles. It's absolutely shambles. But big up to everybody. Win, lose or draw. Glazers out, bankers out. Free Palestine, free the Congo, free um, the people in Sudan. And again, Western countries meddling in Sudan and Sudanese gold. Make sure, do not buy any gold. Do not buy, go and get silver for your partner if you try to get them anniversary or whatever. Because... 40% of the world's gold is comes out of Sudan and the gold is fueling this war because Western countries are backing both, both, both of these military dictators, backing them both in Sudan and it's horrific what's going on. It's, 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 yeah. And what Israel is doing with this genocide, this country, we're in the belly of the beast. This country is directly involved in it. America directly, the whole West, the whole notions of human rights, all that's gone out the window now. You don't believe in human rights. The people are getting bombed. People are eating grass, opening their fast with grass after after fasting all day. And it's shocking what's going on, man. Fuck, fuck the Zionists, man. Fuck the ideology, the racist ideology, that's Zionist. This channel is shadow banned. So let if you anybody, let people know about the channel. Let people know about the channel here. We say it with our chest. We say it with, our, with everything. Free fucking Palestine. That's what we say. But big up, big up to Tom and uh, love and light, man. Uh, yeah, honestly, I need to go and eat, so have a proper food. Happy iftar to the you and everybody in the world, man. Yeah, Britain, the West are the essence of evil, man. What they're doing. Big up, Arian. We had to believe terrorists were the tab because they, they're tropes and big beards, but now it's starting to show who's the real terrorist. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Love and light, man. We, we shout for humanity on this channel. If you get five people to subscribe to this channel, five of your friends, you know what? We'll build a better community. So bring people to the channel. Let people know we're shadow banned, we're demonetized. And the only thing we can do is shout for humanity. We do not allow for dehumanization. We do not join robot nation and dehumanize people. So love and light people. Even when it's Iftar, we're still here with you guys. We're doing the show for you, making that content. So love and light. Tom, journalist one. Tom, last word of the show. Go ahead. Yeah, big up love everybody as always. And like Marie just said, you know, hit the like button on the way out and uh, subscribe for more. And yeah, like Marie says, if notifications don't come through that we're live and everything, remember Monday, six around six o'clock normally into the in Monday around six o'clock, match preview the day before, post match after the game. That's all that you need to remember, guys. Simplistic says that. Three 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 many things. Hit the like button and subscribe as well, people. There you go. Big up. We're gonna do. You know what, Tom? Are you up for it? We're gonna do. Um, we're gonna do decade by decade. Nineties uh, favorite five Manchester United players. Nineties mm -hmm. favorite five Manchester United players. Since Fergie left, the five Manchester United favorite players. We're gonna do that international. Are you ready to compete in that? To come right, and um, go on, yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna do yeah, that. Go We've got some content coming for you. Looking at past the Manchester United history and favorite players from the throughout the decades, so that'll be coming from in a, during the international break. But big up, love and light, people. Look after yourselves and your family and loved ones, and have gratitude because it, it could be worse. You could be in Palestine getting the bomb and getting genocided mm -hmm. right now. Free Palestine, free Palestine, free Palestine. Fuck the Glazers, fuck Zionism, that ideology that's racist. Take care, people. Love and light. Good night. Good night.